Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. Today I want to make an upgrade to my 70 liter escapist tank and that's hopefully going to make the CO2 invisible. Fingers crossed it's going to work. So this is my 70 liter escapist tank. This one has been up and running for a year, but I've rescaped it a few weeks ago. And it's doing well, I think it looks really nice. Uh, it's definitely a high-tech setup, so I'm running pretty strong light. This is the Chihiro's WRGB2 Pro. I'm running an external canister filter, and I'm also running pressurized CO2. And yeah, just really enjoying this tank right now, but one thing that's bothering me is the CO2 in here. And you can't see it right now because it's turned off, but I'll show you some clips of how this tank normally looks during the day. So as you can see, normally during the day we have loads of these really tiny CO2 micro bubbles and they kind of just spoil the view a little bit. So right now the CO2 is turned off and it just looks so much better, like the water is really crystal clear. So I want to add an upgrade to the CO2 system that's hopefully going to keep it this way all the time. Okay, so let's first look at the current situation. I have a 2 kilogram pressurized bottle, I've got a CO2 art regulator, behind that we have an Oasa Filter Smart 300 and I'm using CO2 via an inline CO2 art diffuser. So CO2 comes out through here goes through this green tubing into the um, inline diffuser and then it goes up and it comes out of the uh, glass lily pipe. So I want to remove the inline diffuser and replace it with a CO2 reactor. So a few days ago I was going through the closet where I keep all my aquarium stuff. It's a very messy closet but I was looking for something specific and I stumbled upon this box with the Sierra CO2 reactor. I've had this one for a very long time, always planned on using it, just never really got to it but I guess today we're going to get to it. So this is the Sierra CO2 Flora Active Reactor 500. I think there's a, a thousand as well, so a slightly bigger model. But yeah, this one has innovative double rotor technology for lossless CO2 solution, connection to external filter or a separate pump. And this one is for densely planted aquariums with between 250 and 600 liters. Well, this aquarium is only 70 liters, but I think it should still work. So here we have it, the CO2 reactor from Sierra. Uh, Pretty straightforward, so you connect this to your external canister filter. The water will go in through here, CO2 will go in here, and then it will get mixed in this chamber. There's some blades here that are rotating. And then for the water to go back out again, it has to travel down and then up through this tube. And over here you will connect your filter outflow basically. So pretty simple. And there's a little um, holder here with suction cup, so I think they want you to place this on the side of your glass, but I think I'm gonna mount it in the cabinet. Not sure yet, but yeah, let's just give it a go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with shutting off the filter, shutting up the heater, and then I'll probably just remove the CO2 system and remove the inline diffuser, and then we kind of have space to work, and then we can install our new CO2 reactor. I'm gonna get some towels as well, because I'm sure this is gonna get a little bit messy. Okay, current situation, I've removed the inline diffuser, and I think I came up with a plan for the reactor. I think we should mount it somewhere here against the, uh, the side panel of the cabinet. And then we can remove these suction cups and just use a few screws to mount it. Then we can take a hose from the outflow there, the short one, we can make it longer, attach it here. And then attach the CO2, make a long hose from here to the outflow of the tank. I think that should work. It's mounted to the wall. Now I'm first need to attach a hose on top here just to make sure that it can actually fit without it um, basically folding, you know? Okay, so I was reading some reviews on this uh, CO2 reactor the other day and there were quite a few comments saying that because it's plastic, it actually can break quite easily. So I've basically warmed up all the hoses in some, uh, some boiling water so they kind of, you know, slide on quite easily. Especially the, uh, this little knob for the uh, CO2 hose is very fragile and tends to break very very fast, so I need to be careful. Okay, so far so good. First hose is attached. I've also already attached the little pipe, so we're going all the way up. That's looking good. So now we need to make the second connection from the CO2 reactor to the filter. So I'm gonna cut a small hose and uh, attach that as well. After that we do the CO2 and then we should be all good to go. Here we 
go. That's the second hose attached as well. And in case anyone's wondering, the diameter of the hose, this is the 1622 millimeters. Let's move on to the CO2 and then we're done. So I just have a very short hose from the CO2 regulator to the CO2 reactor. And I'm actually gonna make a cut in the middle and add a check valve. This just to make sure that in case I need to remove the CO2 regulator, the CO2 reactor is not gonna start leaking. Yeah, so I read that this part is very fragile, so I'm gonna be very careful here and pray that I don't break it. All right, everything's connected, CO2 as well. I still have the CO2 regulator over here because I first want to do a leak test. So let's just start a filter, see if everything is, well, let's, let's see if nothing is leaking. Fingers crossed. Well, it looks like nothing is leaking. Uh, so far, we still have quite a lot of air in the chamber. Let's see if that slowly disappears by itself or if we need to uh, somehow remove some air. Uh, let's, let's just give it a few minutes. And of course, nothing changed yet. So I thought, why not try to tilt it a little bit while it's running? Here we go. Why didn't I think of this earlier? Here we go. Much better. All the air is gone. So I'm trying to listen to yeah, the reactor, see if it makes any noise, but it's very little. I mean, the filter's making some noise. I love the Oasa brand, but this filter smart series is definitely the noisiest filter, filter that I have currently. So it's not great, but the reactor itself, you can kind of hear the screws moving, but it's very little. So I'm quite happy with that. I think the next step is to turn on the CO2. Um, of course, I was using it with an inline diffuser, so I need quite a lot of pressure for that. But for the CO2, rea CO2 reactor, we don't really need a lot of pressure, so we can definitely uh, reduce that a little bit. Now let's turn it on. Okay, CO2 is on, so now let's just uh, wait a few minutes, see if, see if anything happens, see if we can see some bubbles up here or if that's it, maybe this is it and now we're done and we're not going to see anything. Okay, it's a little bit later in the week. CO2 reactor has been running for a few days now and it's actually doing really good. So right now it's 2 p.m. So 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And that means that the light has been on for an hour and it means that the CO2 has been on for three hours. CO2 switch is on at 11 a.m. And as you can see, I mean, the water is crystal clear. There's barely any micro bubbles. Um, if you look at the outflow, um yeah can we see it you can see some tiny tiny bubbles kind of making their way up but it's really just a few of them but i mean if you look at the tank in general yeah it's a huge difference yeah so this is the current situation inside the cabinet so you can kind of see the amount of bubbles per second yeah i'm not going to count them if you don't mind it's quite a lot i feel like it's a little bit more compared to when i was using the inline co2 diffuser so you could say that the reactor is eating a little bit more CO2. But one thing that I've changed in the past few days is I've actually switched off the CO2 an hour earlier. So with the inline CO2 diffuser, um, the CO2 was on from 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. The light switches off at 9 p.m. But with the CO2 reactor, I've actually switched the CO2 off at 7 p.m. Because the thing is what happens, like right now you see the amount of bubbles per second, and there's basically a big... CO2 bubble accumulating at the top there and that will stay there for a while even after you switch off the CO2 so if if I switch off the CO2 at 7 o'clock then by 9 uh, that CO2 bubble is basically almost entirely gone so yeah, I basically switched off the CO2 an hour earlier so right now there's still a small amount of micro bubbles escaping the reactor and entering the water column so the other day I was thinking like how can we improve that how can we fix that so I had this idea of filling up the chamber of the reactor with some biomedia I also have a reactor on the Big Shallow. That reactor also has some, some media in the chamber. So I thought if we do that, then the last bit of micro bubbles will get stuck in the media and then they will have more time to dissolve. But you know, to be honest with you, I'm really happy with the results that we got so far. So I can't be bothered to open up the reactor again, make a small adjustment. I think I'm just gonna keep it like this. So actually really pleasantly surprised by the CO2 reactor from Sarah. Um, if I have to say anything negative about it, I would say the fact that it's plastic, just kind of makes it feel a little bit fragile. And the other thing is the fact that it's not 100% silent. It's, it is making a little bit of noise. I do feel like the noise has kind of gotten down over the past few days. I think uh, the first day after I, I installed it, it was making a bit more noise, but yeah, it kind of seems like it's gone down. Um, I don't think you guys can hear, really hear it right now because the filter is kind of overpowering the noise of the um, CO2 reactor, but 
Yeah, let me hold the mic completely next to it. So you mostly hear the filter, but kind of in between it, you can hear the sound of trickling water. So that's the CO2 reactor. To be honest with you, it doesn't really bother me. And once I close the cabinet, I don't really hear it anymore. So I think that's it. I think mission accomplished. We've made the CO2 invisible. So I think that's the end of the video. Guys, let me know in the comments if you are also bothered by the CO2 mist in your aquarium. And let me know if you would consider upgrading to it to a CO2 reactor. That's it. Don't forget to smash that like button. See you guys next time.